Good afternoon, everyone. I call to order the uh, City Council meeting for the City of Rancho Mirage, the uh, City Council, the Library and Observatory Board, the Housing Authority Board, and the City Council representing the Redevelopment Successor Agency. This is our regular meeting for Thursday, June 1st, 2023, and it is 1.02 p.m. Uh, first announcement is that uh, the mayor uh, had a recent uh, uh, procedure and he's, uh, he, needs, he needs some time off, so he asked me to fill in for him today. So that's why I'm here and the mayor is there. Uh, so the first thing that we will do today is a flag salute. Now, um, it, we just finished Memorial Day a couple of days ago, the, the Memorial Day celebration. And so we do have a city council member who uh, served in the armed forces. And so I think it's very appropriate that I ask Ted Weil to uh, uh, lead us in the flag salute today. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem. And, and it is my honor uh, to lead the flag salute during Memorial Day uh, week. And so if you'll please join me in saluting our great country. Hand over your heart. I pledge allegiance, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Ted. And uh, would the city clerk please take the roll? Councilmember Mulatto? Here. Councilmember Marker? Here. Councilmember Weil? Here. Mayor Pro Tem Downs? Here. And Mayor Kite? Here. Okay, next item on the agenda today is a presentation. This is a presentation of a proclamation recognizing June as Pride Month in Rancho Mirage, and Council Member Lynn Mulatto will handle this presentation. Lynn? Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Rancho Mirage. City Hall, thank you. So new residents to Rancho Mirage are quickly learning what all of us longtime residents have learned and experienced and know, and that Rancho Mirage is home to all. We have many, many attributes in this wonderful community, and the biggest attribute, attribute is this is home for all and welcoming and warm. And so the next attribute is that we've had a long history of embracing our LGBTQ community. And this is an ongoing tradition where we recognize June as Pride Month. So with that said, by the way, the Good Trouble group, they get into good trouble. Their name is appropriate at Del Webb. They do many wonderful services for the, for the city, not only Ranch Mirage, but citizens outside of our city. So with this, the city of Ranch Mirage, and that includes the city council, all the staff, residents, would like to present you with this proclamation recognizing LGBTQ and Pride Month for the month of June. This is for you. My name is Ken Richard. The uprising at Stonewall Inn in June 1969 sparked a liberation movement, a call to action that continues to inspire us to live up to our nation's promise of equality, liberty, and justice for all. The yearly Pride event is a time to recall the trials that the gay community has endured and to rejoice the triumphs of trailblazing individuals who have bravely fought and continue to fight for full equality. Pride is both a jubilant communal celebration of visibility and personal celebration of self-worth and dignity. Lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, queer people are extraordinary. And it is such an honor to recognize the resilience and determination of the many individuals who fought and are still fighting to live freely and authentically. We may have been bullied in our childhood, erased in our classrooms, shunned by our government, 
stigmatized by religion, visited by a plague, and still we rise. Today we joyfully say, this is me, this is us. We need to celebrate this incredible journey. Thank you to Councilwoman woman Lynn Mulatto, who initiated this proclamation, and to Mayor Kite, and to the entire city council members, the city manager, and all those that were involved in creating this special moment. Thank you for upholding the dignity of all people. Together, we are opening hearts and minds, laying the foundation for a more just and equitable city and country. Let us continue to dedicate ourselves to protecting the most vulnerable amongst us. Thank you very much for this honor. Thank you, Council Member Mulatto, and thank you, Ken. Ken. Ken gave me some pride beads that I'm going to wear for the rest of the meeting. All right, next item on the agenda is uh, non-agenda public comments. This is an opportunity for the public to speak to issues that are not on the agenda for a maximum of three minutes per speaker, so please limit your time to three minutes. And if you do wish to speak on an agenda item, please wait until that agenda item is called. And I'll ask the city clerk to please handle this section of the agenda. The first speaker is Robert Block. <coughs> Good afternoon. My name is Robert Block. I live at 111 Clearwater Way in the Rancho Mirage. I'm here today as a resident of the estates of Key Largo and as a member of the HOA of that community. Key Largo is a small community of only 59 homes uh, located just off Key Largo Street, which leads to the city's beautiful dog park right down the street from us. As a homeowner and as a board member, I'm here today to both thank the city for their recent uh, action to better attempt to control the blow sand that's coming off Dinah Shore, and to also bring to, to you another matter for your attention. First, we want to thank you for the recent removal uh, and movement of sand on Dinah Shore, on the Costco side of Dinah Shore, uh, and for the placement of a snow fence on that side of the road. I call it a snow fence. That's, I'm from the back, from back in the Midwest, so to me it's a snow fence. <laughs> Here it'd be called a sand fence, but whatever. Uh, it's, it's made the, the situation a lot better. You also moved a great amount of dirt over there, and that's been appreciated as well, although yesterday you would have never known it, but it did help a lot. The city of Palm Desert owns the property uh, uh, directly to the other side of Key Largo. They, had, they recently have put up a fence with material all along it, and if you drive down there now, you'll see that that fence has been broken down for over two weeks with sand all over the road. One lane of Dinah Shore has been closed because of it. There's really a mess down there. But fortunately, the city of Rancho Mirage did the right thing. They put up the, sand, the, uh, the snow fence, and the sand really was curtailed even in the last couple of days. We want to thank you for those efforts, but also have you keep that in mind that it, is, it continues to be a problem down in that area. The other request would be this, that all the way from in front of Del Webb and all the way to in front of Mission Hills, there are beautiful medians in the road with trees, bushes, uh, stone, concrete, vegetation, water. But that median stops right by the Walgreens on the corner of Bob Hope and um, uh, Dinah Shore. And from that point on, it's just dirt and nothing in there whatsoever, going all the way down to the city line, which again is Key Largo. We'd ask for your maybe consideration of doing something with that median area. It really could use some kind of something in their bushes or something to straighten it up a little bit. Again, it's beautiful down the road on Dinah Shore, but it stops right there. We realize there's a lot of blow sand in there, but can we have something possibly looked at to do in that area? We would really appreciate it. You know, as residents of Key Largo, we appreciate the city very much. We appreciate your efforts. We want to thank you for, for all that you do for us. It's a beautiful town. We all love living in Rancho Mirage, but we want to just continue to bring things to your attention. I know at least one of the board members in a, or one of the uh, city council members in the recent election said that he or she would love to listen to people. That's their number one priority. That's why I'm here today as an HOA member. 
Thank you for your help, and thank you for all you do to make our town beautiful. We really do appreciate it. The next thank speaker, you for your comments. The next speaker is Michael McDaniel. Good afternoon, Mr. Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem, and City Council. I'm Michael McDaniel. I was privileged enough to address the City Council last year on behalf of Lifestream Blood Bank as the Director of Donor Recruitment. I'm glad to be back again for some quick public comments. We have our Nine Cities Challenge starting on July 1st, running through the end of August. When I was here last year, I reported that we were down to six hours of critical blood supply. I'm happy to report we are now at six days. So we have had a great improvement in our collections. We've also been importing, knowing that the population in the desert decreases by about 40% over the summer, um, even though blood collection does not. Um, so we are prepared for summer usage this year, much better than we were last year. We're excited to have the city's participation in our nine cities challenge. We co collected a record 1,100 units last year. Um, this, uh, city of Rancho Mirage contributed 147 of those. We're challenging the city this year for 200 units. We have a wonderful bucket hat as uh, the swag item this year. We'll also be doing some promos. How can the city help? Of course, city-sponsored blood drives are fantastic. Um, also, just getting the word out to your friends and neighbors that will be in the area with our blood drives and to visit lstream.org to schedule those appointments. Um, I want to remind the city uh, that uh, along with imports uh, and the increased uh, challenge for collections down here, we're also going to be increasing our challenge in the Inland Empire. We are the Give Where You Live Blood Bank. We're the local blood bank for Southern California. Um, we support uh, over 80 hospitals and are the primary supplier for the Desert Care Network. So we are going to be bringing blood in from not only the low desert, but also the IE to support all of those hospitals this year. And I uh, wanted to get the word out to you and your citizens, and we appreciate your support. Thank you so much. The next speaker is Brad Anderson. I got hecklers. Hi, my name is Brad Anderson. I live in the city of Rancho Mirage. I just wanted to bring a few items. Uh, hopefully, hopefully they will get recorded correctly. Um, from your last meeting, I'm going to comment on a few items. But uh, the first one I have, I'll give this list. To, uh, to put in the public record when I'm done, too. Uh, of course, the city refuses to do any live streams anymore or any remote access. And I really could wrap my head around why you would do that. And, uh, and, and it's just, I think it's purposely to cloud transparency of what the city option is. And that too, could just be the dais itself and how, how people get up and move around and, and they do other things. Maybe they don't want uh, the public to see that. Uh, but also the release of the meeting to YouTube later on, uh, that's really obstructing the media and other people that uh, want timely information concerning the meeting. And, and I know you spent, I, I believe, like $240,000 on this media room that I can't use for my public comments. But I, I hate to see that go to complete waste and, and, and just other aspects. But uh, I just want to bring up closed sessions, too. That's been a topic of mine for a long time because they, they I don't think the city intentionally uses that form in a positive light for the citizens. And, and I would like to see some kind of timestamp of when you go into closed session and when you come out, uh, because uh, I don't get these until a couple of days later. And then, uh, and you, got, you probably remember when you did the illegal action not re reconvene to the uh, open session for a number of years. And I brought that up too, but you just did it at your own time, so you did it anyway. And of course, last week you had, or the last meeting, November 18th, you, you did some litigation, or you fired for litigation against a resident of the city on the 17th, but it wasn't brought up in the closed session topics, and it isn't brought up today. And I just followed through at the courthouse today on that court case. So we're not getting all the information. And, and are you purposely hiding it from us, or is it just a mistake? That's, that's really what we need to know. And I'm just going to comment really slightly on the license plate readers. Uh, the last meeting, uh, council members gave some misleading and disingenuous information concerning <coughs> what those uh, license plate readers are intended to do. And uh, I wrote up some stuff that I know they're intended to do and what they can do. 
And uh, I think the city manager said they don't have any live feed. And that's misleading because they do. So uh, anyway, uh, hopefully, and, and of course, I was not involved, but I seen the recording of the video that the police did the day prior over on Tamaris. And they were told by the city to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and submit this. And thank you very much. The next speaker is Kay Williams. Thank you. Good afternoon, Mr. Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem, City Council members and staff. And I am going to read this because I don't want to be like a you know, squirrel. Um, my name's Kay Williams, and my husband and I built our home on Peterson Road over 20 years ago. Um, lifelong residents grew up here. Peterson Road is not far from this location, if you're unsure. Um, you've seen me here before, basically a pickleball time. But um, this time I'm here to call attention to a homeless situation that we are having in our neighborhood. So many residents in our neighborhood have been in contact lately with code enforcement and the sheriff's department, but we wanted to make sure that you were um, aware of the situation also. The homeless problem in and near our neighborhood has been increasing over the past months. Um, so if you can picture in your mind two huge groves of tamarisk trees, like you see out near the train tracks, but these groves of trees are on the east and west perimeter of a large vacant lot at the north end of Peterson Road. Um, with the trailer park that is off of Frank Sinatra being on the western edge of this lot. Um, this lot is next to the wash and across from Wolfson Park. Um, individuals are setting up shelters and tents within these groves of trees. When they've been warned by the authorities to move, they seem to just move out for a day and then return or go across to the other groves of trees and come back. Um, we're concerned because they've taken down fencing and pulled down lighting in the area. Um, in our area, we've had mailboxes broken into, cars vandalized with property taken, um, like middle of the day on Sunday. Um, evidence that other automobiles have been targeted for tools, individuals climbing over walls and through backyards past midnight, etc. So it's a bit alarming and especially for homeowners um, living in the area by themselves. The photos of recent individuals have been given to the Sheriff's Department, um, including a woman who appears pregnant and a man with three little dogs. Um, it seems to be quite a community that's being developed. So our main concern is that the crime might escalate and something serious might occur like a fire, because there's dry brush around, um, or a physical alter altercation when someone decides to protect their property. So we appreciate anything you can do in regards to this matter and we just wanted to bring it to your attention. Thank you. The next speaker is Wally Melendez. Uh, good afternoon, <clears throat> City Council, administration, and we, the people of uh, Rancho Mirage and surrounding areas. We need more solar-powered EV uh, chargers, not less. I noticed that the two solar-powered electric vehicle chargers have been replaced by a private uh, company, uh, <clears throat> Charge uh, Point. And Charge Point is a commercial company, and they charge for their electricity. I also, I also understand that the electric vehicle EV chargers here in, at, at this lot behind me are get their, their electrons from the solar panels on the roofs all out here. That is free electricity. 
So obviously, it's apparent that Charge Point, this commercial company, is getting free electricity from the area of the city hall for free and charging uh, the, the public. Now, we should know better than that. And I hope they don't change them over there at the library either. Also, clean air is very important. Now, let me tell you something. Tesla, their chargers. Also, another company, a uh, charging company, e EV uh, Go, EV Go. They've got a bunch of chargers, electric vehicle chargers, all over town. Now, we are lucky that we have the ones that we have here, except for the last two, where people can charge their car, being that it's power from the solar panels. And it's done for a reason. It's done for air quality. So we don't need less solar power uh, chargers, electric vehicle chargers. We need more. That was the last speaker card that I have. Is there anyone in the audience who would like to speak during non-agenda public comments who did not submit a speaker card? And that was the last speaker. Thank you, Christine. Thank you to everyone who made comments today. Next, we will go to a council and board member comments, and I'll start from my right to my left. So I'll begin with Council Member Mulatto. Do you have comments today? No comments today. Thank okay. you. Uh, and Mayor Kite is not going to make comments today because of his, uh, uh, his recent procedure. I'll move on to uh, Council Member Ted Weil. Thank you, uh, Mayor Pro Tem. Um, I want to thank uh, those people that participated uh, with me uh, on Memorial Day uh, at our Veterans Memorial uh, in the community park. Uh, I want to thank uh, a particular person without naming all of the names, but uh, her name is Barbara. Barbara was there with her two dogs. Uh, actually, the, the irony is that she was wearing a shirt identical to mine. It was kind of a, if you will, a celebratory uh, shirt with uh, uh, red and, uh, and white stripes for the occasion. But Barbara said, can I join you in prayer for the fallen heroes? I said, absolutely. So we stood there uh, holding hands and said a prayer. And uh, uh, other people came by and joined us. Uh, later on, another one of our, frankly, family members, Bill Maxwell, who has uh, been on our planning commission and been a chairman for a number of years, came by with his wife and their dog. And so it was a great occasion and uh, uh, did, did me a lot of personal satisfaction. As Mayor Pro Tem mentioned earlier, being a veteran, it means a lot to me. Um, I also want to thank uh, our law enforcement for uh, what they did yesterday at Ben and Jerry's. Uh, Lieutenant Espinoza, uh, Deputy Kyle, anyone else that was there. Uh, they just did a great public service, like so many of these situations, where our law enforcement extend themselves to get to know the community. Uh, and of course, uh, not only uh, providing the free ice cream, uh, but having the kids uh, sit on the motorcycles is always exciting. So it was a wonderful community event yesterday. The owner of Ben & Jerry's, the woman that owns the franchise, is a sensational lady and extends herself constantly for the good of our community. So again, to law enforcement, I thank you. 
uh, and it was a, just a, a wonderful occasion. And those two, frankly, in the last several days, are really what community is all about. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem. Thank you, Ted. Council Member Marker. Uh, yes, briefly. I'd like to just say how proud I am to be on City Council for Rancho Mirage, and I'd like to acknowledge all of those who came out for the LGBTQ um, awareness and recognition of June being Pride Month. Um, as a parent of a gay child, I want you all to know you are very brave. It's very difficult to do what you do, to live how you live, to be openly gay or not. Um, but just know that you are very, very brave. And we in this community, all of us up here, I know we support you um, as we are a very friendly community all across the desert. Thank you. Thank you, Meg. And I have some comments as well today. So uh, one of my roles is to serve uh, on the Joint Powers Authority Executive Committee for Visit Greater Palm Springs. Uh, and uh, VGPS recently re uh, released some information on the um, economic impact of tourism in the Coachella Valley. And I want to read uh, to you some of the results of that report. VGPS uses an Oxford economics company to do the research uh, on the impact of, uh, on the economic impact on our community. So the previous high annual economic impact was prior to the pandemic in 2019. And they estimate that the economic impact on the Coachella Valley was $7.5 billion in 2019. Last year, 2022, the report covers the year of 2022, the calendar year 2022, the impact increased to $8.7 billion. So that's a 16% increase over the pre-pandemic year of 2019, and it's a 28% increase over the pandemic-influenced year of 2021. So some added metrics that uh, Oxford Economics, the Oxford Economics Study uh, tells us that you might be interested in. Tourism uh, in our desert, either directly or indirectly, sustains more than 49,000 Coachella Valley jobs. That's about one in four jobs in the VGPS area. This is a, an astounding number to me. Uh, the number of, the total number of visitors uh, to the Coachella Valley in 2022. Now, these are, uh, this is everything from, um, from uh, somebody who came out for a couple of hours to those who spend maybe a couple of months. 14 million visitors to our desert in 2022. And they produce more than $812 million in, in state and local taxes. Now, it's important for us to be aware of these numbers because uh, here in the city of Rancho Mirage, roughly about 30% of our city's annual revenues comes from transient occupancy tax that is uh, derived from, uh, from our hotels. And once we add sales tax to that, the sales taxes that are spent by our, our tourists, it really increases that number substantially. So it's important for us to all be aware uh, of the impact of tourism uh, on our, our, our community and important for us to, uh, to keep these numbers in mind uh, as to how they impact us in Ranch Mirage. Um, so that's my report for today. And now we will go on to city manager comments. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem. Uh, just a couple items for the council today. Uh, so to give an update on the Peterson Road uh, homeless uh, issue, uh, I'd like to thank our code staff and our sheriff personnel. They've been working with that property owner. And just today, we received the 602 form that allows our deputies to remove trespassers from their private property. Uh, I've also been told by our code staff that the property owner is looking into removing the tamarisk trees completely. Uh, to get rid of, um, you know, that attractive nuisance of going there. Uh, so removing the area altogether that they uh, might like to go. Obviously, when it comes to um, the homelessness issue in California, it is a rather difficult one because, uh, you know, you can do your job one day and then the next day uh, it seems like somebody new might be there, but it is something that uh, staff and uh, our sheriff personnel will continue to monitor uh, and actively uh, patrol. Um, so if there's any residents in that area that do notice activity, uh, best thing to do is to call the sheriff's department. And now that we have that form on file from the property owner, uh, they will be able to remove that person from that private property. Uh, a few other notes uh, just to um, 
give information to the public. Uh, our city council meetings and our planning commission meetings are live streamed, so you can do that uh, remotely uh, and you can access that via our website. Um, the EV charger at City Hall, um, that was a very old piece of equipment. Uh, there is no corporation running that. Uh, that is the city running that. We did buy uh, EV chargers uh, from a company called ChargePoint. Um, and that uh, rate that is uh, required only covers the cost. So to give you an example, uh, if you were to charge uh, your EV uh, vehicle on that charger for about an hour, uh, you're looking at about a dollar and 80 cents per hour is what you would be charged. So very low rate, uh, just simply covers the cost. We do not own the solar system here, so we do pay for what uh, that system produces. It's a power purchase agreement. And we are upgrading uh, the library chargers to the same type of model with the similar rate structure. So that's all I have today. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. City Manager. We now go on to the consent calendar, and the consent calendar will also be presented by the City Manager. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Mayor, Council Members, you have five items uh, on your consent calendar for consideration. Item number one is to approve the May 17th, 2023 special meeting minutes. Item number two is to approve the May 18th, 2023 regular meeting minutes. Item number three is to adopt resolution number 2023 next in order, establishing the appropriations limit for the fiscal year 23-24 in accordance with the provisions of Division 9 of Title I of California Government Code. Item number four are contracts, and item number five are demands, and staff is here to answer any questions. And before we go to the council comments or questions on the consent calendar, I'll ask the city clerk to take public comment on the consent calendar. Thank you. I did not receive any speaker cards on the consent calendar. Is there anyone in the audience who would like to speak on a consent calendar item? And there are no speakers. Okay, uh, any council comments on the consent calendar? If none, I'll ask for a motion. Mayor Prem, I'll make a motion to approve the consent calendar. And I'll second. Please vote. Motion carries 5-0. Okay, next item is uh, public hearings and uh, uh, we will have a public hearing considering Approving Consolidated Landscaping and Lighting Maintenance Assessment, District Number 8701. And to present, we have um, the uh, Assistant Public Works Director, Ian Lasley. Ian, your report, please. Okay, got it going now. Okay, good afternoon, uh, Mayor, City Council members. Uh, the item before you today is the Consolidated Landscape and Lighting Maintenance Assessment District's Final Engineer's Annual Levy Report for the fiscal year 2023 and 2024. The landscape, lighting, landscape and Lighting District's purpose is to maintain landscaping and lighting in each of the specific zones mentioned in the engineer's report. The zones are within the districts. The zones within the districts are assessed on a cost recovery basis, assessing parcel owners for the associated maintenance cost of each specific zone. The citywide landscape and lighting zone, which includes all city medians, is assessed to all par parcel owners citywide. Five special benefit zones are assessed only to the parcels receiving direct benefit and special benefits. As required, a public notice has been posted in the local paper noticing today's meeting. Staff recommends that the City Council opens the public hearing, invites testimony, and considers any written protests regarding the Consolidated Landscape and Lighting District 87-01. Uh, staff recommends that City Council adopt both resolutions attached to the staff report and direct the City Clerk to file certified copies of the resolution with the appropriate agencies. This concludes my presentation. I would be happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you, Ian. I'll ask the City Clerk to uh, handle uh, public comments on Ian's report. Thank you. I did not receive any speaker cards on this item. Is there anyone in the audience who would like to provide testimony on this item? And there is no one. Thank you, Christy. Uh, any council comments or questions? If none, I'll ask for a motion. I'll be pleased to uh, make the motion that the city council adopt resolution number 2023 next in order, approving the final engineer's annual levy report for the consolidated landscaping and lighting maintenance assessment 
District Number 87-01 for full year 2023-2024 and B, adopt resolution number 2023 next in order, ordering the levy and collection of annual assessments for the Consolidated Landscaping and Lighting Maintenance Assessment, District Number 87-01 for full year 2023 dash 2024 and C, direct the city clerk to file with the appropriate agencies certified copies of the above resolutions as may be, may be required together with accompanying exhibits, attachments, and reports. I'll second, second that. that. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Please vote. Motion carries 5-0. Thank you, Christy. All right, next is action calendar item number seven on our agenda. Consider approving annual levy of special taxes and assessment for the fire protection and prevention and community facilities districts number numbers one and two. Uh, and uh, Kofi Antobam uh, will, um, will handle the staff report. Kofi, your report, please. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem. Good afternoon, Council. Uh, on an annual basis, various assessments are presented to the council um, for adoption and then submitted to the Riverside County Tax Collector's Office for inclusion on the tax roll. The three resolutions attached to the, tax, to the staff report would approve special assessments that fund public safety, that is police and fire and our library services. The fire and fire exercise special assessments are $60 and $13.66 per dwelling unit, respectively. Due to Prop 20, 218 um, restrictions, these assessments um, are not changing from what they were in this fiscal year and will remain the same for fiscal year 2023 and 2024. The CFD number one, which is um, Community Facilities District number one, funding police and fire, this assessment is determined by a mathematical formula that was established by the enabling ordinance, ordinance number 485. The formula looks at actual expenses and revenue generated for public safety, and then comes up with a net cost that is then apportioned among the parcels. So for fiscal year 2023-2024, the assessment for, special, for residential dwelling units is proposed to be levied at $339.74. The commercial rate, which is based on square footage, um, is rather than per unit basis, is proposed to be levied at 96 cents um, per square feet. The CFD number two, which is the Western Vacation Club, was established in 2001 to fund library services. This assessment is subject to an annual increase to reflect the change in Consumer Price Index for the Riverside, San Bernardino, Ontario area. area. The, CPI change for, um, it, the CPI change from January 2022 to January 2023 was 7.33%. And therefore, the rates for CFD number two will increase from the current $43.16 to $46.32 per accessible week. Staff recommends approval of the resolution, resolutions, which will then be forwarded to the county for placement on the 2023-2024 tax roll. And that concludes my presentation. I'll be happy to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you. Thank you, Kofi. I'll ask the city clerk to handle public comment. Thank you. I have no speaker cards. Is there anyone in the audience who would like to speak on this item? No comments. Thank you, Christy. Any council comments or questions? Okay, I'll ask for a motion. I'll make a motion, if I may, that the City Council, A, adopt resolution number 2023 next in order, ordering the levy and collection of the fire tax and fire excise tax pursuant to ordinance number 190 and ordinance number 475 for fiscal year 2023-2024, and B, adopt resolution number 2023 next in order establishing and ordering the levy and collection of the annual special tax pursuant to ordinance number 485 for community facilities district number one police and fire services and annexations thereto for fiscal year 2023 2024 
and C, adopt resolution number 2023, next in order, establishing and ordering the levy and collection of the annual special tax pursuant to ordinance number 767 for community facilities district number two, Weston Vacation Club, and annexations thereto for fiscal year 2023-2024. And I'll second that. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Please vote. <clears throat> motion carries 5-0. Thank you, Christy. All right, next item on the, uh, ac uh, the action calendar is uh, item eight on the agenda. Uh, consider approving proposed budget for fiscal years 2023, 2024, and 2024, 2025. And uh, Director of Administrative Services, Kofi Antobam will also handle this. Kofi, I think you might have Joseph helping you, so I'll let you introduce Joseph. All right, thank you, Mayor Pro Tem and Council. Um, before I send this over to Joseph, I just want to say a big thank you to um, all of you for um, the budget study session we had for your input and um, yeah, yeah, the direction that was given to us. Um, we've incorporated all the items that um, were brought up, the discussions that were made. Um, into the presentation that is going to be presented by Joseph today. But I also want to take a special moment to say a big thank you to our city manager, Isaiah Hageman, for his leadership. You know, I always say that, you know, it's good to have somebody who, who was in this position as the city manager. We, 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 we talk a lot about things and um, Isaiah has been a great guide. So Isaiah, thank you. Thank you for all you do for the city. And then I also want to say a big thank you to my colleagues, the directors and all the budget liaisons from the divisions. Um, we couldn't get this thing done without your input and your help. So I want to say a big thank you to all of you. And lastly, but not the least, I want to say a big, big, big thank you to Joseph. You know, um, a couple of weeks ago, when we were about to put the budget book together to send to council, um, we're having some technical issues. He was out of the office. It was his day off, but he kept checking. He kept checking, Kofi, where, where are things? Um, and I kept calling him, Joseph, how are things going? But he's just been selfless in, in helping to put this budget together. So I just want to say, Joseph, thank you for all you do. And um, I'm glad that you are in admin services. Over to you, Joseph. Thank you, Kofi. And good afternoon, Mr. Mayor, members of the City Council. Last month, the preliminary budget was distributed to the City Council and made available to the public for review. On May 17th, the City Council held a study session to discuss the budget. Staff has not received any questions or comments on the budget since the study session. Today's presentation will provide a high-level summary of the City's two-year budget, focusing on the fiscal year 2023-2024 fiscal year. The resolutions you act on today will approve the fiscal year 2023-2024 budget and tentatively approve the fiscal year 2024-2025 budget, subject to council review. The operating budget includes most revenues and covers the general costs of running the city, such as electricity, building maintenance, and personnel costs. As shown on your screen, highlighted in blue, the fiscal year 23-24 budget includes approximately $33.8 million in operating revenue and $33 million in operating expenditures for a surplus of approximately $827,000. The fiscal year 24-25 budget tentatively includes approximately $34.3 million in operating revenue and $33.9 million in operating expenditures for a surplus of approximately $470,000. The next two slides in this presentation will provide an overview of the operating revenues and expenditures for fiscal year 23-24. The city tracks general fund operating revenue in more than 30 accounts, which have been grouped into the eight categories shown on your screen. Comprising about $17.7 .7 million of the $33.8 million revenue budget, transient occupancy tax, also known as TOT or bed tax, and sales tax make up a little over 52% of city revenues. With more than 50% of general fund revenues coming from tourist-driven taxes, it is important to understand that the city is highly susceptible to changes in the economy, which is one of the reasons the city council created the prudent reserve. The city's two other major revenue sources are the transfer from CFD fund, the green slice on the pie chart, and other taxes, the gray slice on the pie chart, which includes property taxes and franchise fees. Each of these revenue sources 
contribute more than $4 million to the general fund operating revenue budget. The pie chart currently displayed on your screen shows how operational revenues are spent. About 42% or $13.9 million of the approximately $33 million operating expenditure budget is dedicated to public safety. This amount includes the full year cost of the additional sheriff deputies added in October 2022 and an increase in the subsidy required of the general fund to balance the fire tax fund due to a change in staffing model for fire personnel. Also of note in this year's proposed budget is the city's increased contributions towards regional homelessness services and the Jocelyn Center and the continued contributions towards the Children's Discovery Museum of the Desert, the McCallum Theater, Eisenhower Health, and the many other nonprofit organizations supported through the city's special assistance fund, also known as the SAF program. The capital or non-operating budget for fiscal year 23-24 includes approximately $7 million in non-operating revenue and approximately $8.7 million in non-operating expenditures for reserve spending of approximately $1.7 million. After accounting for the operating surplus of roughly $827,000, the city is projected to spend approximately $875,000 in reserves for fiscal year 23-24. It is normal to see a deficit or spending when discussing the capital budget, as it indicates an agency is spending its reserves and investing funds into the community. Significant capital projects funded from the general fund for fiscal year 23-24 include construction of a free right turn lane onto westbound Ramon at Bob Hope Drive, Vista Del Sol Street improvements, electrical panel replacement and HVAC system improvements at City Hall, and improvements to the amphitheater at the Ranch Mirage Community Park. The capital budget for 24-25 tentatively includes approximately $6 million in operating, non-operating expenditures and no revenue as staff is still exploring grant opportunities and, not has, and has not been awarded any grant funding at this time. After accounting for the operating surplus of roughly $470,000, the city is projected to spend approximately $5.5 million in reserves. Finance currently projects the city will end fiscal year 22-23 with approximately $69 million in reserves. Based on the budget presented today, approximately $875,000 in reserves will be spent in fiscal year 23-24, and $5.5 million of reserves will be used in fiscal year 24-25, leaving an estimated reserve balance of approximately $62.5 million. This concludes my presentation. Thank you for your time and consideration this afternoon. Staff is available for any questions. Thank you, Joseph, and I'll um, ask the uh, city clerk to uh, ask for public comment. I have no speaker cards. Is there anyone in the audience who would like to speak on this item? No comments. Thank you, Christy. Okay, council comments. And I'll begin by saying thank you so much. We owe a, uh, a big uh, debt of thanks to our um, uh, directors and uh, to uh, Kofi and Joseph for their hard work in putting this budget together. Uh, for, for those of you uh, who are here or who are watching who may not be aware, a reason for uh, Kofi's comments is because uh, our city manager did precede Joseph and Kofi in their jobs. So um, it's uh, appropriate for them to, uh, and I appreciate their comments and thanking him. <clears throat> but I'm sure, <clears throat> I'm sure the job is being done equally as well today. Better. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you all for the work that you do. Thank you to our, uh, the directors of each of our departments for your hard work in putting this budget together. Uh, thank you for the work that you did in putting together the study session of about a week or so ago. Uh, and thank you to my council colleagues. Uh, some of you had some uh, comments, the mayor had some comments about uh, some, uh, some additions to the budget uh, that were added to uh, Joseph's presentation today. Uh, any other comments? I'll start uh, from my left. I'll start with you, Meg, any comments? No, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Okay, Ted? No, I, I merely agree that uh, Kofi and Joseph did a, just a great job, uh, although, uh, I hesitate to give too much credit to our city manager. Um, uh, I will do it anyway. The fact that he is a CPA uh, helps immensely so that uh, he has the ability to dissect all of these line items which are critically important. So it is a team effort and I thank everybody for their contribution. Thank, thank you. you Councilmember Mulatto. 
I can't add additional, additional comments that have been said. It's been wonderful working with the admin team. Uh, our directors have been wonderful. To see the collegiality and the teamwork is, is most welcome. And that's why our city operates so well. Thank you for all that you do. Thank you. Okay, uh, I will uh, ask uh, the um, city attorney just to help me uh, in crafting the motion. I believe that what we can do here is uh, on, I'm sorry? Uh, Ted can do it. Can, can do it? Yes, yeah, so I, I believe what uh, in, in crafting the motion what we can do here is include items A through G by uh, reference. Is that correct? Good. Okay, I'll ask Council Member uh, Weil to make the motion, please. <clears throat> yes, as much as I would like to be able to uh, to read all of the information <laughs> uh, for the sake of getting us out of here before 5 o'clock, um, let me just say that the motion is as follows, that the City Council of the City of Rancho Mirage and Board of Directors for the City of Rancho Mirage Housing Authority, Rancho Mirage Library and Observatory, and City of Rancho Mirage Community Services District adopt the resolutions identified as resolutions A through G. I'll second that. We have a motion and a second. Please vote. And motion carries 5-0. Thank you, Christy. Next item on the um, action calendar is item number nine on the agenda. Consider approving certificates of compliance for fiscal year 2023-2024 tax roll. And uh, our um, Assistant Director of Public Works, Ian Lasley, will make this presentation. Ian? Afternoon again. Uh, the <clears throat> Missed a step, there we go. Okay, so the, uh, back again. Uh, the, the County of Riverside administers and collects the, uh, <laughs> retry. The County of Riverside administers the collection of taxes and assessments on behalf of the City of Rancho Mirage. The City will make adjustments to taxes and assessments within the City on an annual basis. The adjustments made by the City to the taxes and assessments are submitted to the County for inclusion on tax rolls. The City submits a Certificate of Compliance to the County listing the districts and funds that the City maintains. The certificates of compliance serve as a mechanism to formally establish compliance with Proposition 218. City staff recommends that City Council authorize the City Manager or his designee to execute and submit to the County a certificate of compliance with Proposition 218. Are we ready for questions or comments? Oh, sorry. Yes, sorry about that. Great, thank you, Ian. Okay, <laughs> I will uh, ask the uh, city clerk to ha handle public uh, comment. Thank you. I did not receive any speaker cards on this item. Is there anyone in the audience who would like to speak? And there are no comments. Thank you, Christy. Any council comments or questions? Seeing none, I will ask for a motion. I'm happy to do that. I'd like to make a motion that the city council authorize the city manager or his designee to execute the necessary certificates of compliance and or other documents as may be required for each fixed charge district to be submitted for levying and collection on the fiscal year 2023-2024 tax roll. And I'll second. We have a motion and a second. Please vote. And motion carries 5-0. Thank you, Christy. Okay, next item on the action calendar is agenda item number 10. Uh, consider adopting resolution number 2023, next in order, ordering the levy and collection of park maintenance special tax pursuant to ordinance number 685 for fiscal year 2023-2024. And again, direct, uh, Assistant Director of Public Works, Ian Lasley, will make this presentation. Ian? All right. Uh, this item before you today is the park maintenance district special tax levy for fiscal years 2023 and 2024. In 1998, Rancho Mirage res residents approved a special park tax to fund the maintenance of Rancho Mirage City Parks. The park tax is levied equally to each resident dwelling within the city, regardless of value. Commercial, recreational, and undeveloped land is levied accordingly to the equivalent dwelling unit calculation as shown on page one of the resolution. The county levy levies the roll and collects the park tax on behalf of the city. 
As approved by the voters, the park tax can only be adjusted annually according to CPI. This year's CPI adjustment is 8.7% and is reflected in the attached resolution and assessment rates. The current park tax is $34.84 per equivalent dwelling unit. Staff recommends that City Council approve the attached resolution and adjust the 2023-2024 park tax based on the CPI increase. This concludes my presentation. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Wyatt, and uh, I'll ask the city clerk to handle public comment. Thank you. Again, I have no speaker cards on this item. Is there anyone in the audience who would like to speak? No speakers. Okay, any council comment or questions? Uh, okay, uh, may I have a motion? I'd be happy to make a, a motion that the city council A, adopt resolution number 2023, next in order, ordering the levy and collection of the park maintenance special tax pursuant to ordinance number 685 for fiscal year 2023-2024 and B, direct the city clerk to file certified copies of the above resolution and accompanying, accompanying exhibits, attachments, and reports with the appropriate agencies as required. I'll second that. We have a motion and a second. Please vote. Motion carries 5-0. Thank you, Christy. Okay, last item on the action calendar, item number 11 on our agenda uh, is uh, consider awarding a contract for sidewalk gap improvement. And the director of public works, um, Ryan Stendell, will uh, make this presentation. Ryan. Afternoon, honorable mayor and council members. The item I'm presenting to you this afternoon is a request to enter into a contract uh, for some sidewalk infills throughout the city, generally in the area of the Ranch Mirage Dog Park, Dinah Shore, and Key Largo Drive. Um, this was placed out to bid in April of 2023, and bids were opened on May 10th of this year. Um, upon review, the apparent low bidder, uh, Voltaire Engineering, was deemed or determined non-responsive due to failing to comply with the requirements of the bid documents, including not providing references and or um, subcontractor license numbers, um, and was not cured within the time prescribed within the public contracting code. Uh, staff has reviewed this item with both city attorney, city manager, and staff numerous times, and believe the appropriate action is to request that the city council authorize to the lowest responsive and responsible bidder LC Paving and Sealing Inc. in the amount not to exceed $263,410 um, for this project. Staff would be happy to answer any procedural questions or project questions that the council may have. That concludes my report and I uh, look forward to answering any questions if there are any. Thank you, Ryan. And uh, I'll ask the city clerk to handle public comment. Yes, we received one speaker card, Peter Delgado. Good afternoon, City of Rancho Mirage. My name is uh, Peter Delgado. I am the owner of uh, Voltaire Engineering. Uh, we're a small company. We're out of Redlands. Um, and I'm here to protest this award to uh, LC Paving. On May 10th, we submitted a bid, uh, as you heard from Mr. Ryan. Uh, our bid was for $251,000, $465. Uh, LC paving was uh, for $263,410. Granite paving or Granite Construction Company was uh, $325,520. Uh, this is on, on May 10th. On May 23rd, I received an email from, um, I believe it's from Mr. Charles Nesbitt, uh, telling me that uh, we failed to uh, submit uh, three separate references, which we did. Uh, the other, the number two was uh, we failed to disclose, to disclose the CSLB licensed subcontractors. Uh, which we did not on purpose, but we submitted the DIR number, which is the Department of Industrial Relations, which upon Mr. Nesbitt uh, looking up that number, he would have seen all the information that's needed. Uh, I contacted Mr. Nesbitt and I told him I was going to protest. Uh, so we submitted a, a protest, which we emailed uh, Mr., uh, Mr. Ryan here. Um, I, I also asked for a copy of uh, LC Paving uh, con uh, proposal and Granite uh, Construction Company's proposal uh, so I can review it. And upon my review, I found that there were six omissions and errors also on LC Paving's, more than my, more than my mistakes. 
LC Payton has been, been in business for 31 years and 11 months. That's to show that they're not exempt from making uh, omissions and errors on their bid. Granite Construction Company, there were five omissions and errors on their bid. They've been licensed for 93 years and seven months. It's to show you that they are also not exempt from making a mistake. My mistake, my omission, does, does not and will not impact the performance or completion of the project. We're a small company. Yes, there was an omission, but I feel that the city could use his discretion and give us, the small business guys, a chance. We're, we're perfectly licensed, we're bonded. We, I mean, just to get a surety to bond you, you have to show a level of responsibility and not two years, three years. I mean, there has to be a credible, credible uh, uh, responsibility for them to bond, uh, to, to bond a project like this. Um, we've, we've tried, I've sent emails. I, I'm still waiting to hear from even Mr. Quintanilla. He was, he was CC on it. I haven't heard from anybody. So we can dialogue here. I made it very clear to Mr. Ryan. This is not, when, when I get, when I get told something, I don't take it personal. To me, it's constructive, you know, and if I miss something, but if it's not going to make an impact on me completing the project, give me a chance. I made the argument to say, and I think, at least I'm going to speak for myself, right? If I am driving 67 miles an hour on 65 mile an hour zone, I get pulled over by, by a police officer, I'm, I am really going to expect that officer to use his discretion. How was I traveling at 67 miles an hour? Am I a danger to the public at 67 miles an hour? So I'm going to expect that. I, I do want to give you every opportunity to uh, express your opinions, but I do have to ask you to wrap it up. I, I am here to kindly ask to please reconsider your position and give us an opportunity to, to be an asset to the city of Rancho Mirage. That's what I ask, please. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. All right, I'll ask um, the uh, city clerk to uh, handle public comment. Thank you, is there uh, Or the rest else? of public comment, I'm sorry. <laughs> is there anyone else in the audience who would like to speak on this item? That was the last speaker. Okay, any uh, council comments or questions? I just have one. So uh, I'm sure that, uh, Ryan, that uh, you and Steve reviewed this carefully along with the city manager to come to your conclusions and to make this recommendation. Yes, absolutely. And we've been in consultation with Mr. Delgado. It's been uh, attempting to be very helpful. Everything's been very cordial. We do stand behind our recommendation as uh, printed in the staff report. Understand. Okay. Any other uh, comment or question from council? No. I, I, I merely want to say that we... I think in all situations, try to bend over backwards uh, on all bid situations, uh, taking into consideration uh, the track record of the individuals that we do business with. I think public works is very thorough in their analysis as to uh, who they ultimately choose to do the work. And I feel quite comfortable that uh, uh, Mr. Quintanilla has reviewed uh, the situation and feels that uh, the, the accepted bid is in order and it's justifiable that uh, it comes before this body for a vote. Uh, with that being said, uh, Mr. Mayor Pro Tem, whenever you're ready, I'll be happy to make a motion. If there are no other questions or comments, please do. Uh, thank you. I will make a motion that the City Council award the contract for the sidewalk gaps improvements, City Project CP 2361, to the lowest responsive and responsible bidder, LC Paving and Ceiling, in the amount of $263,410. I need a second. I'll second that. We have a motion and a second. Please vote. Motion carries 5-0. Thank you, Christy. That is the end of our regular agenda. I will ask the uh, city uh, attorney to um, um, tell us about closed session agenda. Thank you, Mr. Mo Mayor Pro Tem. The city council now is going to recess in a closed session pursuant to government code section 54956.9D1 regarding the following cases. Vacation rental owners and neighbors of Rancho Mirage et al. versus city of Rancho Mirage 
vacation rental owners and neighbors of Rancho Mirage versus City of Rancho Mirage, Wendy Heckman, Wendy Hope Heckman versus City of Rancho Mirage. Um, the fourth case, we don't we do not specify the case name since disclosure could jeopardize pending settlement negotiations. And the last item we have is a conference with legal counsel regard, regarding potential initiation of litigation, and that's pursuant to Government Code Section 54956.9D4, and that's one potential case. Thank you, Stephen. We will move to closed session. Uh, we are back and we have completed closed session. We're back in open session with the city manager. Please give us a report on closed session activity. City, I'm sorry, city attorney. <laughs> that's, please give that's us, okay. One yeah, of you. That was a compliment. Yes. Um, well, Mr. Mayor Pro Tem, the city council took no, no reportable action in closed session. Thank you, Mr. City Attorney. Meeting is closed. Meeting is adjourned. Yep.